If you've been spending a lot of time with your dog during lockdown, or if you're bringing a new puppy into your house and you've taken some time off work, there's a real chance that when life gets back to normal, you go to work, schools reopen, they could start to suffer from separation anxiety, which can be really debilitating and cause them to really hurt themselves. Well, today I'm bringing you some top tips to help prevent separation anxiety ever becoming a problem for your dog. <coughs> Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr Alex and I'm here to help you optimise your dog's health so they can live the full and happy life that they deserve. And today I'm bringing you the second part of my interview with the fantastic Sarah Andreco, who's a veterinary nurse and canine behaviour consultant as we talk all about how to prevent separation anxiety in your new dog. If, you find, if people are finding themselves in a lockdown situation or they're thinking about bringing a puppy into their house, how can they prevent this from ever rearing its head? Absolutely. And, and the, the general answer to that is by providing all of the puppy's needs. And yeah. So it's not as simple as it sounds, obviously. But looking at things like we were talking about before, tackling things like their enrichment schedule, their daily one-on-one -on -one time. Um, you know, oftentimes I hear, I'm like, okay, what do you do that's enriching with your dog? Oh, I have a big backyard. I send him outside and he goes and runs and plays. Well, we've domesticated animals to be our companions and they thrive off of that. They're very eager to please animals. So making sure that they have adequate one-on-one -on -one time, at least 30 minutes twice a day, morning and evening, when they have those two waves of periods of energy and their yeah. second wind, so to speak. Um, so enrichment, physical activity for sure, building in um, really good parental direction early on, setting routines. Um, and then also that other piece to that is building an independent time. So teaching that puppy when it's time to settle and when it's time to independently play. And like you had mentioned before, we can do that with puzzle toys, frozen pongs, with crate time. Um, also something that people don't think about is even if you're home, put your puppy in the crate for rest periods, for nap yeah. periods. Not only does it help them retain information that they've learned throughout the day in training with late learning, but also it teaches them that independent rest time and they become very comfortable with that. And that's what you want. You want them to enjoy that separate time and then enjoy the time that we're, they're with you when they are, but understanding those different periods. So building in everything that they need, um, obviously from nutrition and things like that too, but more importantly, activity wise, yeah. schedule wise with physical and mental activities, and then also building in that independent play time for themselves. Yeah, crate training is a big thing. And I, I know it's something that a lot of people struggle with. You know, they bring a new puppy, they, they're, they're so excited, they want to provide, you know, the best that they can, all the attention in the world. Um, the puppy goes in the crate, doesn't like it, lasts about 10 seconds, and then gets brought out and never goes back in. So um yeah how, how I mean, we used to say i remember i think my first boss used to say well when you get a puppy go and give your neighbors a bottle of wine each because there's going to be a period of time when they're barking and so you know you get your apologies in ahead of time but um you know rather than just completely ignoring them are there ways that they can that, that you your strategies that you found that work for your clients to to maximize the chance of a successful transition to crate training absolutely um scheduling helps a lot with them so knowing when they need to come out like they need to go to the bathroom or they're hungry yeah. uh, there's a huge difference between distress and a temper tantrum yeah. so just like we do with human kids you know if you allow the puppy to make every decision based off the tantrum that it has you're setting yourself up for a spoiled rotten individual that's essentially going to have some pretty bad behavioral problems down the road let me tell you i'm much more expensive five years down the road than in the beginning so prevention is key um and yes you got to wait it out again there's a difference between distress and a temper tantrum and the sooner that you give into that puppy and teach them that that whining and fussing and complaining is going to get them their way the harder it's going to be the next time around Boundaries are really, really important. Parental guidance is really important. These little guys don't make the best decisions on their own. It's like leaving a toddler to choose what it's going to do and what it's not going to do. Yeah. They don't make good decisions. You've got to do that for them. So sometimes you got to have some tough love and you got to stick it out, you know, yeah. for the better. Yeah. It's like kids that don't like to do their homework. Well, you have to, because I want you to be an intelligent contributor to society later on down the road and you'll thank me for it. But right now you don't want to do it. You don't understand why I'm making you, but it's important. Same thing with puppies. Try to um, try to ignore the temper tantrum behavior. You'll learn to know the difference when your puppy really has to go out. There's a yeah. different sound to that, yeah. and you'll get familiarized with that. Okay to make a mistake every once in a while and slip up to where you're like, oops, I should have taken him out earlier. He went. Or you take him out and you realize that he just wants to run around and play. Nobody's expecting perfection. Just do the best that you can with that, but be very consistent with the crates. 
setting a schedule based on um, how frequently the puppy goes out to potty, um, your play, your enrichment, your exercise, your downtime, all that stuff, and trying to make it predictable helps with crate training immensely because then the puppy comes to learn and predict and understand when it's crate time. And that's a comfort all on its own. That predictability is really helpful in building a secure puppy and a confident puppy. So they like those schedules and those routines. So the best that you can schedule one for them, the better their behavioral will be balanced overall in learning how to crate train. And the added benefit to that is that it really speeds up the potty training process immensely. Okay. Yeah. It makes it so yeah. much easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, routine is a bit of a buzzword, isn't it? That's, it's, it's great. We're all creatures of habit and we all love routine and, and yeah we get stressed when things are all out of whack and and our dogs are the same and the other thing I, I, I guess I say I often say to people is that dogs are very good at training us because yes. <laughs> yeah you know that whining or that oh I don't want to I'm going to refuse my food because I know that the the good mm -hmm. stuff's in the fridge and that's going to get brought out and and yeah we've got to be mindful that we're not being trained and actually we're in charge of the of the situation behavioral problems are the biggest cause of euthanasia and rehoming in dogs under three years of age so to make sure that you get your puppy off to the right start make sure you check out my playlist which talks all about the importance of socialization be sure too to check out sarah's channel linked on screen and until next time i'm dr alex this is our pets health because they're family